Hello, today we're going to uh, show you how to uh, use a, uh, a power chair uh, motor wheel assembly and uh, use it for robotic purposes. Um, as it is, um, the unit, this particular unit has a connector with uh, four connections, two white, red and a black one. The, the red and black are direct power to the motor the two white ones go to a, uh, a type of brake that looks like this. This is a brake that's inside of this casing here. So I'm going to go ahead and take this uh, cover off. It's got two screws, one on each side. Phillips screws in this case and the cover comes off now here's the brake I'm talking about now what happens with these things if you try to use it for robotics I've already tried it the hard way you take a battery you hook it up to this thing and I you mean sparks fly the wheel doesn't turn and right now as you see the wheel is free free uh, running and there's a mechanical system here on the side, this lever here, that now it feels as if it's locked. This is not a brake, really. What it's doing is this is engaging and disengaging a worm gear in this housing here. Okay? So it feels engaged, but that's good. That's what we want. All right? You can't turn it by hand. Now, you come over here and you take the brake off with, in this model is three screws again three Phillips screws you take it off of course if you're gonna use this for a power chair you're not gonna be taking this brake off alright you don't want you want to keep this on if you're gonna use it for that this is for robotics only where you just want a motor to go forward and backward okay three screws are out and basically this piece just comes right off alright now from here all I do is I cut the tie wrap these are the two white wires go directly to this connector what I'm doing here is, is I'm not going to use it I don't have no need for it I don't want it I disconnect it right here cut the cable keep the brake you never know in the future you might need it for something some other project anyway that that being said it's done now I take some tape even though I don't plan to use these these guys I don't like to leave wires dangling like that so I'll just tape them up never know uh, I didn't cut them short because I don't know, maybe in the future I might want to put some kind of a, an emitter here and uh, have it send some pulses, you know, out here so I can, you know, check the speed of the motor or something. I don't know. But anyway, that's back like that. I take the cover, put the cover back on, put the screws back on. Okay, that was quick and easy, painless. So now, the two white uh, connections here are doing nothing. You saw I cut the wires. And now the black and the red are for the motor directly. Now to test it, I haven't tested this motor yet. I don't even know if it works. I have these two pieces of wire. I don't have the connector for this. So I'm going to have to uh, invent something here. Got a piece of red wire. I'm going to kind of stuff it into this connector right here 
and the same thing I only have a yellow piece of wire here doesn't matter what color it is uh, in here and just to secure them I'm gonna put some tape on there to hold them in place Okay, this is just for testing purposes, just to see if the motor works. Got my gel cell here, it's 12 volts, this is a 24 volt motor. And so at least I should see some kind of motion, even if it's going to be slow, I just want to see some kind of motion. This is the positive, this is the negative. Red is the positive, and hopefully it doesn't blow up. There you go. The motor works in this direction and in that direction. If by any chance you had this thing disengaged, what it does is the motor turns, you can hear it, it's turning, but the gearing is disengaged. The worm gear that's in there that drives this thing is disengaged. That's all that does. Right now it's, you can't turn it by hand. You don't want to force it, you don't want to turn it by hand. And that's all there is to it.